Hello everybody, I'm Audi and uh, today I will tell a story and share a little bit about my beloved daughter, Felicia, who had a profound sensorineural hidden loss because of uh, meningitis in uh, her really early age at three years old and hopefully uh, my story about my daughter's hearing metamorph the journey from hearing <laughs> to deaf and back to hearing again would inspire you and uh, give you a slight bit information about what to come if your son or daughter or anybody who loves who you loved was diagnosed with a hearing loss, especially a severe to profound hearing loss, who is going to be needed help from a cochlear implants. Okay, let me start. Uh, this is the story. I was uh, really late on my age to get married. I was married at 30 years old. So that very normally after my marriage, uh, me and my husband are really want to have a children. And then we try and try and uh, we haven't been succeeded in a whole one year, the first year of our marriage. And uh, we are almost at the age of uh, hopelessness <laughs> and uh, thinking about adoption and everything else. But then uh, something uh, miracles comes up and I, uh, I was pregnant, thank God, and uh, I was really happy and uh, this is a really, really uh, wonderful time in my life that I was be able to present uh, the complete me to my husband and the family that I am being able to labor a child. It was not a really easy era for my pregnancy. Uh, I was uh, collapsed a lot and I have a morning sickness, uh, even uh, afternoon sickness and evening sickness and uh, night sickness and um, uh, to be to be honest it's kind of a sickness all day and I cannot eat anything uh, and um, I still work at the office by that time and it's really hard for me to maintain the pregnancy I was uh, submitted to the hospital probably three or four times because uh, of my excessive uh, nauseous and uh, I cannot take any food and it was a very trying era to to have uh, the, that pregnancy by that time and uh, because of that we really study a lot uh, me and my husband really study a lot on how are we going to prepare this baby uh, physically, medically, uh, mentally, psychologically, and everything that we could touch our hands on. We're really trying to be a perfect parents for this child that we've been waiting for so long. And then at the, on September 28, uh, 2004, uh, she was born uh, with a, a C-section operation because I have a placenta previa, so I cannot do it uh, normally. And then uh, she was really uh, normal in a very a limit of a perfect baby should have. So. Her weight is 2.5 kilograms. I think it's about, about 10 pounds. Okay, <laughs> really small. And um, she had a jaundice at uh, the five first day of her life. And then um, we've been uh, we've been 
uh, discovered that uh, she had an allergy and uh, later later years we find out that uh, she had she had an asthma but other than that she was perfect because uh, her body is perfect her fingers is perfect her face her hair her, everything is just the way it should be and because we are really uh, studying on the preparing to be a very good parents so we know there is some kind of test that we should have at the early stage of uh, our baby so we have a hearing test we have a blood test we have a motoric test everything yeah, we, we, we take everything that should be taken even though in our country it's not a mandatory uh, it's not even known by a lot of people but we are insist on doing that yeah we, we've been uh, even arguing with some doctors when Parisa is just uh, three months old and we want to do a hearing test for her which is a uh, we have a BERA and uh, uh, not really common to do at that time but we are, we are really insist on doing that and we found out that her hearing was perfect so there is nothing nothing wrong with her when uh, she was born uh, her up guard test is 10 everything is just very normal um, and then um, at the progress of time she had been uh, very active very happy but this remains small and she kind of a really a picky eater so she is not uh, eat very much uh, and we have to even uh, a little bit force her to eat because she doesn't really want she doesn't really like to eat but other than that she's okay and uh, something happened uh, at three years old and then she suddenly have a high fever and actually before that when Felicia has a fever it always high so even it's just a sore throat or maybe a, a cold or maybe a cough or even a flu she always had about 38 to 39 degrees Celsius when she had a fever and and then when she had the 39th fever I was thought that that's that is uh, just natural she used to to have that but when it's progressing into 40 degrees for a whole day without any signs of decreasing I was beginning to panic and uh, I uh, submit her to the uh, emergency room and uh, she get a uh, she get treated and uh, they don't know what caused it because they cannot find any any uh, bad infection but her blood test comes up really strange because she has uh, this this parameter of infection very high the doctor said it's equal to people who had AIDS and they cannot uh, find what is wrong with her and uh, after three days of high fever she is uh, having a episode of trembling so she doesn't she doesn't have a seizure or anything it's just trembling really hard trembling even the the hospital bed is trembling with her and it happens about five minutes she trembling very heavily and uh, the doctor said is it normal for her to have something like that and and I said of course not she never had that kind of episode but the doctors keep uh, having the test on her blood and on her any other uh, kind of test and it's come back negative but she still had that high fever and uh, only one episode of trembling but after that she is beginning to uh, get a little bit better uh, they give her an antibiotic and everything and she began uh, okay again after a week in the hospital then uh, we are 
release and going back home. But something really strange about her. She is not responding properly to my asking. If I give her a question, uh, she reply on a strange, strange kind of way. Sometimes it doesn't really answer the questions. And when she came to home, she began to complaining that all her toys is broken because uh, she tried to play her piano and it doesn't give out sounds. And she had this uh, small trumpet and it doesn't give out sounds also. And then she want to watch a TV and she put the volume into maximum and she cannot hear it. And my heart drops. I know there's something really, really wrong about her. I don't know whether I have a courage to take a test or not, but I have a really, really strong suspicion that she is having a sudden deafness. So I'm going back to the hospital. And funnily enough, that week there is a really good seminar on ENT doctors in Malaysia. So all the competent doctors of ENT are living in Indonesia. So I found only a few that not really have experience with this kind of thing and they give me a mixed mix opinion and I still don't know what happens and then finally I have this uh, neural pediatricians and I go consulted with him and he convinced me that yes Valisa has a sudden deafness and to be sure uh, she asked me to do the BERA the BERA again and it was confirmed that she had Valisa had a profound sensory neural hearing loss with a limit of 120 dB still blank still refer. So after even after 120 dBs, she still cannot listen to a sound. So it's really, really bad, profound. Um, I don't know what to do. I don't have any family or friends that uh, undergo this kind of situation. So I put up an email to all of my communities. I, I, I follow many of mailing lists with my friends and um, my colleagues and etc. I thought about the condition. I thought what happened uh, to my Felicia and I asked what should I do. I don't know what to do. And I go to many doctors and they doesn't give me any explanation about what happened. They just ask me to try this, try that and I don't want to try anything if I if it doesn't make sense. And then uh, that's just about it. So we, we me and my husband are very frustrated. We don't know what to do until one of my friends suggests me to go to a foundation uh, that consists of parents who had a uh, hearing loss children. I was reluctant at first because that was the dark, <laughs> the dark, the dark time of my life. Uh, we've been crying all night and all day. We don't know what to do. No one helped us. No one knew what to do. And um, but my friend insisted that uh, I should go to that foundation's meeting, and so I go. And after that, I met with a very, very good people. And uh, amazingly enough, I, meet, I met with a lot of hearing loss children who is really is the same like Felicia a profound hearing loss children that can communicate really well and when I ask what they do to them their parents said that they have a cochlear implant so I was asking the question about the cochlear implant so this is the, the picture of Alisa at 14 months old so uh, actually she is singing at this uh, video and uh, if you hear her singing, uh, you can see that her hearing is normal at 14 months, 14 months old. And you can uh, hear the, the, the story in the video on my channel in YouTube. 
and then oh, sorry and at th uh, two years five months I also have a video and I was talking to her and she respond beautifully and she could all all she would was be able to understand what I'm asking and answering it really uh, genuinely, very creatively, and just to uh, prove to many others that she does have a normal killing before the weaver. And then afterwards, uh, as I told you, uh, she had this. Uh, sudden deafness and then I met with the foundation and they helped me to give information about what to do, how much cost does it take and so on and so on. Um, and at that time also, uh, Valisa has been three months without any hearing aids because I don't know what to do and her speech ability is decreasing very rapidly. So before she was be able to talk just like her peers at three years old, very fluently, very actively, very cute. But then after three months of hearing loss without any hearing aid, her speech becomes slower and unnatural and then really hard to understand. So I'm really panicking at that time. I already tried anything, even even a traditional way of healing. People give me a suggestion of this and that, and I try and I try and I try. But the people that I met in foundation said that they also have tried so many other methods, and none of them are working or give any help. So they strongly recommend me to do the cochlear implant to study the possibility of giving her a cochlear implant. At that time, I was informed the price is 350, 350 million rupees, so it's around $35,000, I think, yeah, around that. And of course, I don't have that much of a money at that time, so I just kept thinking on how am I going to help my daughter and uh, having that cochlear implant with her so that she could progress normally just like any other child. And I try to uh, uh, collect any information that I have about this. And suddenly I had an email from my old friend who is a lawyer in the hospital in Singapore. So uh, she uh, maintained to get a hold of an email of an ENT doctor that she knew had a really uh, many experience with this kind of thing in her career. She is a professor at the National University Hospital of Singapore, or we call it NUH. And um, my friend gave me her email and uh, encouraged me to email her about my case. And so I did. And just one day after that, I had a reply from this professor. Uh, her name is D Professor Lin Lim. And uh, she gave a very specific information about what might happen to my daughter. And she, she, she said that she's suspecting meni meningitis. At that time, I don't know whether my daughter have a meningitis or not. Um, but she had suspected with the chronology chronological that I've been told her, she suspected that Falisa has a meningitis case and she asked me to come to Singapore with Falisa to be able to take a test and for her to see for herself how is Falisa's condition, how is his hearing condition, her hearing limitation and what should we do to her to help her live normally. And then I told her that I know uh, it costs a lot and I don't have that kind of money, but uh, she convinced me that all I have to do is just come and uh, the money that was uh, needed to come to Singapore is not that much and I think I can manage that, so I'll go. And then I meet with her 
and then uh, Felicia take a bunch of tests, uh, CT scan, MRI, uh, another DRA, and then an audiological uh, audiometry test, and also a physical test, and so on and so on at NUH. She was really nice, really helpful, and we had all the tests in two days, so they scheduled for us a very precise and short of time to do all the tests in just two days so we don't stay in Singapore for too long. And Professor Lin Lim said that, uh, yes, it was uh, conclusive that my daughter need a help of a cochlear implant or we can call it a cochlear implant uh, candidate. And she said that it probably still in the a gold grace period, so I might be able to go back to Indonesia and put a, a, a very strong hearing aid uh, and to make Falisa wear it and do a audio verbal therapy three times a week and we'll see after one month what happened. If it was reversible, it means that Falisa could get back uh, her hearing and uh, she came back to what she used to be, then it's okay. But af if after one month of intensive therapy and using a hearing aid uh, intensively, she still have the same condition, then I should decide what to do with her. And of course, we're going back to Indonesia and uh, do as we told. I put a uh, uh, very high uh, frequency uh, and a strong hearing aid to her on her left and her right ear both and we do an intensive uh, audio verbal therapy three times a week and I also do audio therapy at homes at morning at noon at night and at any any time I had a chance to give her a stimulation of her hearing and after a month uh, physically she is a little bit better right now she could understand when I call her and then she seems to uh, have a little bit of understanding of what happens around her but when I do an audiometry test here in Indonesia uh, they come up all the same all the same and even a little bit worse at the right ear. So me and my husband have a discussion what should we do and we are uh, make a decision that we should go back to NUH and talk to uh, Professor Lin Lim of what to do because we still doesn't have a man that money to do the, the, the cochlear implant operation and but we would like to know whether Professor Lin Lim had any other methods that would uh, give help to Felicia. So this is uh, Felicia's unaided audiometry at the uh, at NUH when she was uh, taking a test at our first visit. As you can see, uh, uh, sorry, 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 go back, go back, go back. Sorry, this is the aided prefill. Okay, as you can see, this unaided audiometry, so without without any uh, hearing aid. At the right ear, she could only uh, hearing at the 250 dBs, 500. Oh, sorry, uh, 250 hertz, 500 hertz, then and one kilohertz. And it was uh, really severe also at 90 decibels and uh, low frequency at 60, 70 decibels. And after 1 kilohertz, she cannot hear anything, even though it goes up to 120 dB. And at the left ear, is uh, quite all the same. She still not be able to hear even after... 500 hertz, so her last uh, hearing is 500 hertz, and it's also in a 95 
decibels. So this condition was normally referred as a profound uh, hearing loss. Yeah, and uh, a very uh, strong cochlear implants candidate. And this is when uh, she uh, wearing his her hearing aid. So in the right in the right ear when she using her hearing aid, it's just helping her up to 40 dBs on 250 hertz. And in a in a normal uh, 500 hertz to 1 kilohertz, she could only hear at uh, 70 to 60 dBs, which is not a speech uh, speech area, so she cannot understand really well uh, the the person the other person's uh, speech. She cannot hear many many of sounds, uh, vowel sounds, uh, consonant f sounds. In uh, in in summary, she cannot understand what other people are saying, even though she already had a hearing aid and especially after 4 kilohertz she cannot hear anything at all even with the hearing aids so this means that the hearing aids is not helping her so she needs uh, another help which is a cochlear implant and then she does her therapies when we get back and uh, 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 it was uh, uh, proven that when she switch the cochlear implants on, she begins to understand, she begins to improve her link 6 detection, uh, getting uh, further and further, and she could understand what uh, people are saying, can understand uh, instruction at the EVT. At this uh, photo, actually, this is supposed to be a video of Felisa taking a audio verbal therapy with Ms. Rini Salam, my therapist. And it began uh, to, to improve after the switch on, and it's really helped her a lot to get back on track to what her life used to be. And then uh, this is her first audio metric test when she had her cochlear implant switch on. And uh, because I can only afford one cochlear implant, so I can only put one cochlear implant on her right ear then. Yeah, it was uh, uh, on 2008, 2008 uh, early 2000, uh, January 2008. So we can only help her with the cochlear implant on the right ear, and this is is the result, which is which is I'm very very happy about, because she already had a a hearing uh, range in the speech area at the uh, banana speech area. It means that she can understand at any frequency, 250 hertz, 500 hertz, one kilohertz. 2 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz even, at a very uh, speech area decibel, like 25, 30, and 40, which means that she could understand speech when she uh, is beginning to understand many, many words after, after that. So as you can see here, uh, this is a, a report that very satisfying after a switch on. This is just after a switch on. So I stay in Singapore for two weeks and uh, Falisa had a switch on on the first week and have a uh, first mapping at the second week. So this is the first week result after the switch on and I, I, I'm so happy and uh, Falisa also seems uh, much, much happier than before. And now Falisa is very active. She is 10 years old now. So at the age of 7, or 8, sorry, 7, 7, 7, uh, two. so before, before her 8, 7 and a half, suddenly Falisa asked what could improve her hearing. And I told her that if she had a bilateral cochlear implant, her hearing would be improved and she would hear better than what she is hearing right now. 
and so she asked me whether she could have that other cochlear implant operation and I don't know how just like what happened when we have this first cochlear implant operation the money comes up from nowhere <laughs> and then uh, we suddenly be able to do the operation and at the just before eight years old Valisa had her second cochlear implant operation so she uh, starting to become bilateral cochlear implants at the age of eight and right now both of her cochlear implants is very optimized uh, she has passed the second audio verbal therapy at her left ear right now I haven't uh, had the audiometry test with her cochlear implant yet I should I think but I haven't got the time to do so but she is really really active really really happy have a really good great grades in school most of her grades are uh, outstanding even better than A A A A plus and she can speak very well because she is wearing hijab just like me so nobody knows that she had two cochlear implants at each ear so nobody even knows that she is a, a hearing loss a hearing impaired child because she speaks very normally she is uh, mingling with her friends very normally she had a very happy life very content life had a great grades ha have a lot of activities at school she can uh, speak uh, Bahasa uh, English and also Arabic because we have to memorize many surah from our Quran and she had the most uh, the most uh, memorized of dua in her uh, between her peers so she is considered even talented on on reciting the Quran she had an experience of uh, following a com competition on reciting surah and so on so it is really I'm, I'm sorry so very proud of her she really doesn't take no <laughs> as an answer uh, like when she take a Cambridge test at her English class and then the the teacher said that the uh, hearing hearing test will be taken by a cassette uh, tape recorder cassette she is speak for herself and ask whether she can have a CD instead because she understand that uh, if she hearing a tape uh, cassette uh, the hearing would not be able to be understand with her, by her so she asked for a CD and uh, she fight for it and they give her a CD quality of hearing test and she passed so I think uh, it is a bless that I choose to immediately get a cochlear implant uh, so she was diagnosed with uh, hearing loss at October 2007 and she was implant with cochlear implant uh, at January 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 of 2008 so she has been not having hearing for only three months three months four months probably yeah almost four months and it was a very quick decision and I don't know how but it happens very fast and I'm not regret a single thing about it she is really talented right now she she could even give you a webinar some uh, sometimes and I really thankful to all the people that I met that show me the right way all the doctors all uh, the friends all the therapies and thanks to medal to give a very good support when we we and also uh, professor Lin Lim choose the same brand for Felisa because of her uh, medical background she has to wear medal and it doesn't fail me at all it doesn't fail Falisa at all she could sing she could do whatever she likes right now and I'm so happy with it so it's all about the journey and I was I'm going to encourage you all to be able to cope 
with the sadness, to cope with the frustration, to cope with the hopelessness, and rise up to take up the challenge and collecting information and finding the community like I find the foundation in Indonesia. You should find a similar uh, family that undergo the same situation so you could strengthen each other and do make a decision quickly because we are running out of time. The more our children being separated from the sound, the, the more hard for her or him to uh, catch her or him left behind of the hearing so the bet the, the, the sooner the better uh, please make a quick decision money is not an issue here you can find money from everywhere but um, learning from my experience timing is everything if I don't do that uh, quick uh, decision probably Falisa doesn't have this kind of life right now because I have uh, several friends that uh, after being uh, diagnosed as a cochlear implant candidates take a bunch year <laughs> a whole year or even two years until decided to have the operation and the progress of their children is not as quick as Falisa and so that I encourage you to uh, quickly <laughs> decide to have a operation, and believe me, it's really worth it. Even if even if that is a big operation, a very risky one, but the quality of life that my daughter having right now is uncomparable to what happened at the operation, and uncomparable to the money that we have to try to get to give her that uh, cochlear implant so uh, please 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 do so help your children faster better and quicker because uh, the sooner the better she would be able to catch up with her peers and live normally like other children thank you for listening to my presentation and hopefully it helps you and gives you a little bit insight of what should come in your way if you have the same situation and good luck may Allah bless you all and please remember special kids are for special moms special kids are for special dads special kids are for special parents so you are special thank you very much <laughs>